Hello YouTube, Fuzzfinger here, and in Final Fantasy XII today, we're finally going to be getting back to doing the story walkthrough. So I hope you enjoy watching, and don't forget to support me by hitting the like button if you do, and being subscribed to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned. Okay, so if you've only been following the numbered episodes, that is what we need to do as part of the story, then there's a couple of optional bits that you'll still probably want to do while you're here in Balfenheim Port. The first thing is if you speak to Dice over there, he'll sell you some teleport stones. And second of all, if you go down to the magic vendor, that's the wand on the map that you can see, then they'll have some new magics to sell. In particular, uh, you'll want to purchase spells that are like the level 3 spells, Cura Jar, Blizzard Gar, Slow Gar, uh, Dark Gar, etc. Make sure you grab those, they are going to come in useful. And just over here next to the Chocobo there'll be a chest with a batch of Gil, about 6,000 if I remember. But also you can check out my video where I show you how to do Gil farming, it's very fun, very easy. And you'll, as you can see, make tons and tons of gear, more than you'll ever need. In fact even the ability Gil Toss will be useful because it does so much damage. And that's probably the optional stuff that you really want to do at a minimum, and it won't take you long at all. Uh, but after you've done that, we are going to go straight on now uh, and continue on with the story. And we're going to return, first of all, to Galmore Jungle, since that's going to be our next pass-through destination. And we do have the location for it at the Orange Crystal. And since we've got no shortage of teleport stones from this particular point in the game, we can basically just teleport away everywhere we want to our heart's content. Okay, so from the teleport crystal here, we're just going to start by heading over to the west. And I have gained a few levels with my characters by doing the optional content that we've uh, done. Which you can all find in the playlist, by the way, of course, if you do want to check that out. Uh, but I haven't gone overboard with overleveling. I haven't used the auto-leveling methods, even though I've shown you how to do them. Because I don't want to overtake people uh, too much who are playing, you know, different styles and whatnot with how much they're leveling their characters. Since I do want to be able to share with you tactics and everything else rather than just poning through everything because we're so overpowered and overleveled. So I'm just in my mid-40s at the moment, which is probably where you want to be minimum, in all honesty, at this particular point in the game. And when you can, you're going to want to start heading south here in the Feywood. Uh, sorry, in the Garmore Jungle. We're heading to the Feywood, which is the exit that is right down south. So I'm just going to slow the speed down to two times, since these narrow passageways can cause us a few issues. We've done a few hunts around this area as well, haven't we? But again, all that was optional. So don't worry if you decide not to do that. Some of these hellhounds, by the way, can be a little bit problematic if you're underleveled. But we're getting some nice levels still, aren't we? Okay, that's where I'm at. And then here we go into the Felwood. I haven't really explored the Felwood much previously. Watch out for the traps. Pretty mean, aren't they, really? To place traps where they place them there. So the first destination that we want to head to is the southeastern exit. And a lot of the treasures, by the way, in this initial area uh, just contain, you know, items and stuff. Uh, you usable items, not weapons or armour. So don't worry too much about trying to farm for gear in this bit. There are a few one-time only spawns in terms of uh, treasures in the uh, Felwood. So I'll show you those as and when we come to them. But do know that some of the enemies have taken a step up in difficulty from previous areas here. So again, if you're underleveled, you might struggle just a little bit. So in the southeastern exit here, why would they put a trap right at the entrance? You'll see the map is out of order. The mini-map, that is. What you want to do is start by just staying to the left-hand side. Because eventually we're going to come across a chest. Not this one. Just grab it anyway. 
uh, but a little bit further down that's going to contain the map for this place. But it is possible to miss it. So I'm just going to kill these enemies. And see where it is exactly. It's actually in this next alcove down here. There it is. Along with another treasure chest for our looting pleasure. Rightio. So now we have the map of the Feywood. And our location for this area is of course now complete. So we'll just carry on making our way to the next area at this point. Uh, I'm just checking there's still no items to loot from the chests here. So what we're going to do is head south and down the south exit, out the south exit because there is a save crystal coming up. It's not a teleport crystal unfortunately, but still a save crystal is better than now. And it's just down at this southern exit here, I'm just going to show you in a moment. If you're wondering why I'm getting gill, if you've missed out on all the optional content every time we're killing enemies here, it's because some of my characters have equipped the Cat Ear Hood, which you can purchase from the Bazaar, the Clan Provisioner in the Bazaar in Rabanasta, and you can equip it on up to six of your characters if you purchase enough of them, and it basically turns license points into gill at the rate of, I think it's five times your character's level per license point, so not too shabby at all. Okay, so here's the save Chris. I'm just going to save up for a moment before we carry on. Right, at this point we are going to be facing a boss fight, so we are going to want to just prepare for that. Now, the boss in question basically removes your MP very, very quickly. So what you want to do is replace with your gambits any uh, healing magics and resurrection, resurrection such as, uh, what is it, rays, with phoenix downs and potions, and turn your other magics off and charge as well, otherwise you'll be spamming charge like there's no tomorrow. And basically you're going to be relying on items and physical attacks in order to uh, kill this next boss. But you're going to want to guard against Confuse and against Disable. So I recommend bowline sashes or ribbons. I've, I've got a couple of ribbons I'm going to use. And if you want to know how to get the ribbon then please watch my optional video in the playlist. Which is entitled How to Get the Ribbon. And that's going to guard against pretty much all status effects. There are exceptions. Uh, but in this particular case, it's going to be particularly useful. And from this point on here, I'll just show you the map. We're going to head over to the uh, south part, actually. Where there's a mist and a cutscene. And it seems like the way is blocked. Okay, so it looks like Ashes of the Harp is going to guide us down into the secret section. And remember, this boss uh, does hit those status effects, so make sure you guard against whatever you can. It basically hits you with loads of status effects, but Confuse and Disable are the two you really need to watch against, otherwise you won't be able to heal the others. First thing you're going to want to do before your MP is run out is dispel this guy, because it starts with haste and all sorts of other stuff. So hopefully it's uh, being dispelled now. Can't quite see because of the camera angles. But yeah, I believe that's the case because Fran is now attacking normally. And as you can see, our MP has pretty much gone down. And if you can guard against status ailments, then this fight becomes a heck of a lot more simple. So these ribbons are definitely helping us a lot. This guy's level 43, so it's about the same level as my party. He summons Marlboros as well, which I mean, know that they like to uh, do status stuff to us. And 
he has four, uh, sorry, 73,000 health. So it looks like he's going down. Interestingly, he didn't actually get rid of our mischarges, which I was kind of expecting him to do. So it looks like you could do quickening encounters on this battle, which would be helpful for many, I'm sure, if you struggle with it. But yeah, guard against status effects, and that boss, as you can see, is pretty darn simple, in all honesty. So we get a victory, congratulations, yada yada yada. Okay. Obviously at this point we are going to want to just pop back and save. So the mini map is out of action, but it never seems to be a problem in the Zodiac Age because you have the overlay map anyway, which basically serves the same purpose. Right folks, so I'm going to finish off here today and in the next episode we're going to be continuing to cross the Feywood and we'll be solving some puzzles as well. So do come back and join me for that. If today's video has helped you out in any way, please don't forget to hit the like button and I look forward to joining you again soon for more Final Fantasy XII.